All right, hello fifth grade. Today is day uh, 50 of our video lessons. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and staying healthy. Um, so today it's going to be sort of a short video. Um, I just want to give you all the opportunity to catch up on any work that you might not have turned in because tomorrow I'm going to send out the assignment list showing all the work that you're that you might be missing. So today I really want you to just to catch up on on any work that you haven't done for my class or even Miss Gillespie's class, okay? And right now I'll walk you through on on how to check what you're what you're missing, okay? So um, I'll show you that a little later, but for now, pause the video and start your warm up. Okay, so we're adding fractions here. Number one says two over four plus three over five. Let's go ahead and do that on another whiteboard. So I have. I have 2 over 4 plus 3 over 5. So notice how we are adding, and because we are adding, your denominators need to be the same. Okay, remember, when you're adding fractions, your denominators need to be the same. Here, they are not, so we're going to have to find our least common denominator. We're going to have to find our LCD. Okay, so we have a denominator of 4 and a denominator of 5. So let's skip count. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. We'll stop right there. And then let's count by 5s. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 45, 50, and we'll stop right there, okay? So what number do they both have in common? What is my least common denominator? What number do these both denominators have in common? Exactly, they have a 20. They have a 20, so my least common denominator is 20. So how can I multiply this 4 to become a 20? 4 times... 5, exactly. 4 times 5 will give me 20. So 2 times 5, 10. 4 times 5, 20. And then let's add them up. But we need to multiply this one. How can I, how can I multiply this 5 to become a 20? Exactly, by 4. 5 times 4 will give me 20. So then I have 12 plus 20. I mean 12 over 20. And now look, your denominators are the same. So let's go ahead and add 10 plus 12, 22 over 20. Now, here's what I want you all to um, really pay attention on. This is my answer, right? But my answer is as an improper fraction. My numerator is bigger than, the, than my denominator. So we can leave it as this, but let's say that our instruction said that I had to switch it into a mixed number. So how do I do that? going to need to divide, right? Because my answer is 22 over 20. So if I divide it, it'll be 20 over 20. I mean, 20 divided by 22. How many times does 20 go into 22? 1. 20 times 1, 20. 22 times tw oh, 22 minus 22. So my answer is 1 whole, 2 over 20. Okay, now these two are the same thing. Remember, uh, when we first started fractions and we had an improper fraction, we drew it, right? We drew um, a box of a, rec a tape diagram and it had 20 pieces, right? Something like that. And then I had to shade in two. So all of them are shaded in. And then I needed to shade in two more. So I needed to grab another one. I shaded in two, and so then I had one whole, right? This is one whole, one whole piece, and then here I have two over 20, okay? And so you see, that's how we got this one whole and two over 20. This is what we used to do, remember? But then sometimes the reason why we stopped doing it or the reason why we went over to this method, the horseshoe, I mean, when we went over to this method, to do the dividing method, is because... Let's say we had a denominator of 50. I don't want to draw 50 pieces of rectangles. 
it's a lot easier for me to divide it like we did here, okay? Because I think that's where a lot of us got mixed up on, on our quiz, on our adding and subtracting of fractions quiz. So today we're going to go over that a little bit more. But anyways, now we have 1 over 2 plus 2 over 20. Again, we don't have our same denominator, so let's find it. And again, I need to find my least common. I cannot add these, everybody. I cannot add them, okay? Because the denominators are not the same. So I need to find my least common denominator. I have a denominator of 2 and a denominator of 10. So let's skip count. 2, 4, 6, 8. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. All right, let's skip count by 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and we'll stop right there. What numbers do they have in common? They have a lot of numbers in common, right? They have a 10, and they have a 20. So what number am I going to have to choose for my least common denominator? Remember, we are choosing the least common denominator. So that means it has to be 10, right? 10 is going to be our least common denominator. So how can I multiply this 2 to become a 10? 2 times 5. And 1 times 5. So let's multiply. 1 times 5, that is 5. 2 times 5, that is 10. And then I multiply 2 over 10. Well, that's already 10. I don't need to do anything to it. So I have 2 over 10. My denominators are the same, so I can add 5 plus 2. That's 7 over 10. Okay? And here it's just a normal fraction. It's not an improper fraction or it's not a mixed number, so we can go ahead and leave it like that. All right? Now, let's go ahead and work on our objective for today. So today, everybody, we're going to revisit. We are going to go over again how to add mixed numbers and how to add improper fractions, okay? Because it seems like we need a little bit of more help on that. Because according to your test, it seemed like we were getting confused on multiplication and adding, okay, because those are two completely different methods, everybody. So for example, I'm gonna draw a line here. Let's say that I had um, three holes, two over six, plus four holes and two over eight, okay? And then here, let's have a multiplication problem. Let's say that I had uh, one half, times two holes and one tenth, right? They're completely different methods, everybody. When we multiply, you do, we do not worry about our least common denominator, okay? We do not worry about our least common denominator. All right. Now let's go ahead and um, work with the addition problem first here in orange. Here I have three holes and two over six plus four holes and two over eight. Now, there are different ways we can solve this, everybody. Um, that's the cool thing about fractions. You have different ways, different strategies to solve it. Uh, let us go over one method, okay? And do it here. Okay. So, one thing we can do is let's just go ahead and add up our whole numbers first, okay? This is my whole number, 3 and the 4. So if I add 3 plus 4, that'll give me 7. And then I have to add up uh, my fractions, 2 over 6 plus 2 over 8. And again, look, your denominators are not the same, so you're going to have to make them the same. So I have to find my least common denominator. So I have a denominator of 2, I mean a denominator of 6, and a denominator of 8. So let's go ahead and skip count. I have 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. What's next? 
42, 48, 54, and we'll stop right there. Next up we have 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, Mm, we're 56 and 63. No, 68 times. Eight times one, eight times six, six times eight, 48, six times seven, same nine, 63. Yeah. All right. That's for getting my uh, multiplications, everybody. 71. And then 80. Okay. All right. So what numbers do they have in common? They only have one in common, right? They have this 48. So how, so my least common denominator is 48. How can I multiply the six to give me a 48? Six times what number will give me 48? Eight. Two times eight, 16 over 48 plus, now how can I multiply this eight to give me 48? Eight times what? Eight times six. 12 over 48. So now when I add them up, I have 28 over 48 and that is my answer. Okay, so that took us quite a while, but that was only one method. Our answer is 28 over 48. Now, here's another way you could have done it, everybody. Well, I could have used a horseshoe method to search this, I mean, to switch this mixed number into an improper fraction. Okay, so how do I turn a mixed number into an improper fraction. Let's see, I have three holes and two over six. I need to switch that as an improper fraction. So let's see. And again, just to review everybody, I, f I found the answer to this using this method where I added up my whole numbers and then I added up my fractions. And then I found my least common denominator and then I got that, okay? Ooh. See, good thing that we're looking back because we added up our whole numbers and that gave us seven, three plus four is seven. And then when I added up my fractions, I got this. So it actually is seven holes and 28 over 48, okay? That is my answer. Okay, sorry about that, but good thing we look back, right? So that's one method, this method. Another method we can use though is we can switch these mixed numbers into an improper fraction. And I'll show you why that helps right now. So in order to switch this into an improper fraction, I need to multiply six times three, that is 18. Then I add 18 plus two, that gives me 20. And my denominator stays the same, okay? So now this is that. But I, let's go ahead and switch up this one now. I have four holes and two over eight. And let's use the horseshoe method again. Four times eight, that is 32. 32 plus two, that is 34 over eight. Now, instead of adding up these two fractions, I'm gonna add up these two fractions. Now that helps because I don't, now I don't have to worry about any whole numbers. I don't have to worry about these big numbers anymore because now I have regular fra fractions like these. Now the cool thing about this is now I could just find my least common denominator to add them up, right? Exactly what we did here. Exactly what we did here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me just erase this. So I have a denominator of six denominator of eight so again but look I, I actually already found my least common denominator 
right here, right? My least common denominator, I found that it was 48. So, how can I multiply? I'm actually put my least common denominator down here. How can I multiply the 6 to become a 48? 6 times. 6 times 8. 2 times 20 times 8, 160 over 48. Plus, now this one. How can I multiply this 8 to give me a 48? Exactly, multiply by 6. 34 times 6, let's do that right here. So that's 204 over 48. And now look, my denominators are the same, so I can go ahead and add. So we have 364 over 48. But we got this, we got seven holes and 28 over 48 here, and we got 364 and 48. So let's switch this up into a mixed number to see if we get that, okay? So I'll go ahead and do that. I have to do that on this whiteboard. How many times can a 48 go into a 3? Well, it can't. How many times can a 48 go into a 36? Well, it can't. So now, how many times can a 48 go into a 364? Let's see. Uh, 48 times 4, maybe? 32. 4 times 4, 16, plus 3, 19. No, we could go a bit more. We could go a bit higher. Uh, 48 times, let's say, 6. 24, 28, no, let's say 7, plus 5, 29, 30, 31, 2, 3, 3. I think it's that, it's times, it fits in 7 times. So then 336 minus 5, 14, Thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, two, zero. So now as a whole number, I don't have any other number to drop. My answer is seven, twenty-eight over forty-eight. So that right there is my answer. Seven holes and twenty-eight over forty-eight. And look, cool thing, we got the same exact thing. Okay, we got the same exact thing. Now, when we move over to this question, and actually before that, let's review what we did. So we solved it using one method, and then the second method that we used is I switched up my mixed numbers. So this fraction and this fraction, I switched it up to an improper fraction. And the reason I did that was so I can get rid of my whole numbers because now I have this right here. I have this equation. And now that becomes a little bit easier because all I need to do now, now is find my least common denominator and then add them up when I got this. And then the final step was just to divide to find out my mixed number, okay? So that's what we did. Now when we multiply fractions, everybody, let's go ahead and switch up um, what we're doing. And actually, let me erase all of this. This will be the last example and then that'll be it. So let's say that I had one over two times two and one over 10. 
Now, you cannot approach this problem the same as an addition or a subtraction problem. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Adding and subtracting fractions is different than multiplying and dividing fractions, okay? You cannot use the same method here. Let me show you what I mean. So if I come across this problem, again, there are different ways I can do it, but one way is I'm going to switch this number into an improper fraction. So I have two holes, 110. I'm going to have to switch it into an improper fraction, two 10 times 2, 20. 20 plus 1, 21 over 10, okay? So then I can just multiply that by the 1 half and then multiply that here. And for mo when multiplying, you do not need to find a least common denominator, everybody. You can just multiply straight across. So 1 times 21 is 21. 2 times 10 is 20. And so that's my answer right there. And if you wanted to, you can go ahead and switch this into, an imp into a mixed number. 20 goes into 21 one time. 21 minus 21. So my answer as a mixed number is one whole and then one over 20. Okay. And that's my answer right there. All right. So. Uh, that'll be it. So today you're just going to get a lot more practice on adding um, and subtracting fractions, okay? But I just wanted to make sure that you know the difference between adding and subtracting fractions and multiplying fractions, okay? Because I think some of you in your test, um, you were getting a bit confused. You were trying to find the least common denominator when multiplying. For example, if you had a problem like that, you were trying to find the least common denominator for 2 and 10. But remember, you're multiplying, everybody. You're not adding or, subtract or you're subtracting. When you multiply, you can just multiply straight across. You don't need to find the least common denominator when you multiply, okay? So hopefully this makes it a little bit easier. And that's it gonna, that's going to be it for math, okay? You're going to work on four pages. Okay, so on this one, you're going to convert uh, mixed numbers into improper fractions. And then here you're going to convert improper fractions into mixed numbers. And then here you're going to um, add up mixed numbers, okay? And that's going to be it, everybody. I'm actually not going to assign you any science for today because I want you to work on your math. And in addition, I want you to work on anything that you might not have. So let's say that um, here I'll just show you what we have done. So you should have taken all of these tests already, the ones that are in green. The ones that are in green here, okay? So you should have taken week two, eight, Earth, space, science, shaping the earth. You should have taken structure of the earth, the amazing brain, all of these, okay? So if you haven't done so, please do so um, by today because I will be sending out that missing assignment sheet tomorrow. So please, please be sure that you are completing all your assignments, okay? And then on Seesaw, you go to the activities page and whatever you have here, that means you have not done it. So please complete it. Okay. Um, and that's it, everybody. Please also make sure that you completed um, your test from yesterday. Remember, that's a test that does count for a lot of your grade. Um, but other than that, that is it, everybody. Have a great day.